Okay, so we're going to look at uh, local linear approximation. Um, and really all we're going to do today is find the equation of the tangent line. And instead of using the function, we're going to use the equation of the line to approximate values for the function. So we can use the equation of a tangent line, which we've done before, to approximate values of complicated functions. And if we zoom into a function close enough, any function, all functions will become very close to approximating a straight line. And I'm going to bring up the old, oh, bring up the old parabola here. Okay, so you've seen this this graph before, the old parabola, and let's. Let's pick part of this uh, parabola here. Um, just a second here. Let's just look at this thing here for a sec. Here we go. Okay, so let's look at this graph, which is clearly a curve, not a straight line. But if we zoom in, what is happening to the shape of this graph? As we get closer and closer, what's happening to the shape of my graph here? Yeah, and I, I can eventually zoom in here so close that this thing will basically look exactly like a straight line. Okay, so I think we can see that regardless of where we look at a graph, we can zoom in and keep zooming in and keep zooming in until eventually our graph looks exactly like a straight line. So let's consider that parabola. I've got drawn a picture of it here. Consider the parabola y equals x squared. And let's find the equation of the tangent line to the graph at x equals 1. So if we did that right here, there's x equals 1. We are going to find, let's see if I can draw a semi-decent tangent line, something like that. We're going to find the equation of that line right there. Okay, so let's, let's do that. Let's find the equation of a tangent line at 1. So what do we need to know to find the equation of a tangent line? Here's the equation of a, of a line. Why? This is the point-slope formula. So there's three things we need to know. We need to know what's the slope. That's where the derivative comes in. And we need a point an x value and a y value. Well, they've given us the x value. They said x is 1. So we've got that. When x is 1, what will y be? Well, we go back to our equation, right? Sure. When I put 1 in for x, 1 squared is 1. So we've got x and we've got y. The only thing we need is the slope. How do we find the slope of a tangent line? Take the... What do I need to do? Take the derivative, of course. So f prime of x, well, let's write it here. F, f of x was x squared. f prime of x, a very simple derivative to do, will be 2x. And so the slope of the tangent line at 1 will be 2. So what is the equation of the tangent line? It would be y minus the y value, which is 1, equals slope, which was 2, x minus the x value, like so. And if we wanted to, we could, we could just simplify it a bit here to this. This is just the, the y equals mx plus b way of writing the equation of the tangent line. So now that we have the, we have the equation of this line, this was the parabola y equals x squared, and now we have the equation of this line, which is y equals 2x minus 1. 
And so what local linear approximation is saying is that for x values right around 1, this equation will give you approximately the same y value as this function here because they're pretty much the same thing as long as you're using x values really close to 1. So that's why lines can approximate actual functions. So this tangent line here pretty much mirrors the exact same y values as this function. And you can see as we get farther away from 1, there gets to be a bigger and a bigger gap. And this tangent line is not a very good approximation for x values way over here. And of course, if we carry it on to the right, eventually these, this line is going to be a long ways away from our graph. And it won't be very good. But right around 1, x values 1, the line is pretty close to the same actual value of the function. So we can make, make a generalization now. And if we use any general point, so this is x naught, some x value. And if we want the y value, we would simply stick it into the function, so f of x naught. And putting it into our point slope formula, we would get y minus y naught. That's another way of writing that as f of x naught. Equals the slope, f prime of x x minus x naught. So this is just the point slope formula here for the equation of a line, the tangent line. And if we isolated y, so if we brought this over to this side, we would get y equals f of x naught plus the slope times x minus x naught. And so what we're saying then is if we are using x values that are really close to x naught, if we're in our other example here, if we're using x values that are really close to 1, then the value of the graph, it should be approximately equal to, the true y value of the function will be approximately equal to the equation of the tangent line. And that's what we mean by the local approx linear approximation of a function. So the tangent line will be approximately the same value of as the function. So I've brought up a little, our curve here, the parabola. And what I've got here is the purple line there. There's your y equals x squared graph. And then this here is the tangent line at 1. And so um, so you can see that right at the place of intersection, the tangent line and the graph y equals x squared will be perfect, exactly the same for that point x equals 1. The error is 0. But as we start to slide your x values, so if we went to an x value of 1.07, which is still pretty close to 1. When you stick it in the parabola, you get a, a y value of 1.1449. And when you put it in the line, you get 1.14. So they're pretty close, right? The error is very small. If you tried, let's, let's move it out to a, a, a next value of 1.25. So now if you were to take an x value of 1.25 and put it in the parabola, there's your y value. If you take the x value and put it in the line, there's your y value. So our error is a little bit more, but still, we're within six one hundredths there for our y values. And obviously, as we continue to get farther and farther away from 1, the error is going to get larger and larger and larger as the gap between the function and the line increases. And then we could move the same thing as we move to the left. We're pretty good right, right in here, and then our gap starts to widen, and our error really gets out as we move away from 1. From the left. Here's another, uh, here's the graph of sine x. So look at this one. Let's, let's slide it right over here so that the errors, see if I can get it bang on here. It's hard to line it up. Hmm. I give up. That's pretty close to being at the same, same point. But here, because sine x has almost, is almost like a straight line for a good chunk of the curve. We're at excellent, excellent um, approximations here for a long ways. 
right? It's not until we start to get around here that all of a sudden our error gets gets great. So sometimes, depending on the nature of the function, the tangent line will be a good approximation for values even a fair ways away from the approximation of zero. If we were doing an approximation at one and a half, or pi over two rather, okay, for this one you can see that the the approximation is pretty good, but only for a very short values of x. As soon as you get a little bit farther away from that one and a half, now our error is starting to get more and more and more. Okay, right, let's do an actual question where we might use use this. Um, so find the local linear approximation of f of x equals x cubed at x equals 1. And then we're going to use that to approximate 1.1 cubed. So you can see if you had to find out what is 1.1 cubed, you would have to put it in, you'd have to put 1.1 in for x here and cube it, which would be a fair bit of, fair bit of work. Um, it's not particularly an easy, easy thing to do. So what we're going to do is instead of working with this function, y equals x cubed, we're going to find the equation of the tangent line at 1, and then we're going to stick 1.1 into its formula. Okay, so graphically, if you were to look at y equals x cubed, it looks like this. Here's the y value of 1. Instead of using the y equals x cubed graph, we're going to find this line right here, and we're going to use that equation instead. So we want the equation of the tangent line. So y minus y naught equals slope x minus x naught. And there's three things we need to know, the x value, the y value, and the, and the slope. So let's find the slope f of x equals x cubed. Let's find its derivative. The derivative would be 3x squared. So the slope of the tangent line at x equals 1 would be 3 times 1 squared, or 3. So we have the slope of the tangent line being 3 when x is 1. And of course, if x is 1, y will also be 1 when you substitute that into the function. So the equation would become y minus y naught. This is x naught, this is y naught, and this is m. So y minus 1 equals slope 3 x minus 1. And if we wanted to isolate y, we would get y equals 3x minus 2. So what we're saying is that this equation here is basically the same thing as this equation up here for x values that are very close to 1. So if I want to find out what's the y value at 1.1, instead of sticking 1.1 in here, I'm going to stick it in my linear approximation. And this is much easier to do. I would get a y value of approximately 1.3. So 1.1 all cubed is approximately 1.3. Example 2. Same kind of an idea. Find the local linear approximation of square root of x. And then we're going to use that line to approximate the square root of 1.1. So again, the square root of 1.1, we can't, we can't do that without a calculator. We know the square root of 1 is 1, so the square root of 1.1 would be slightly more than that. But we're going to use our tangent line to, uh, to figure that out. So oops, f of x equals the square root of x. Here's our tangent line. It's going to look like this. So we need x naught. We've got that. That's uh, 1. We're going to approximate it at x equals 1. Okay, because that's something that we can easily square root. And so putting 1 into the function, the square root of 1 is also 1. Now we just need to find out what the slope is. So that's taking the derivative. 
Now before we do that, let's write the, x, the square root of x as an exponent, so x to the 1 half, so that we can use our power rule. So exponent down in front and reduce the exponent by 1 gives us this. And a negative exponent means the reciprocal, so x is going to go down in the denominator. And the power of 1 half means the square root. So here's our, here's our slope expression, and the slope at 1 would be 1 over 2. So our equation for our tangent line would be y minus 1 equals slope x minus 1, or y equals 1 half x plus 1 half when we isolate y. So what we're saying is the square root function, which looks something like this, if you looked at the tangent line when x was 1, it would look something like this. And that's the equation we've just found. Y equals 1 half x plus a half. And so, figuring out what approximately the square root of 1.1 is, instead of using this function, let's use this function. So y will equal 1 half of 1.1 plus a half. And a half of 1.1 is 0 0.0. Oops. 0 0.55 plus another a half is 1.05. So we could do the square root of 1.1 in our heads just using this equation instead of this one. <clears throat> and we won't be exact, but we will be very close. So in our final example here, it just says use local linear approximation to estimate what 3.03 to the power of 4 is. Um, well, 3.03 to the power of 4 would be a lot of multiplying out. We could do it, but it would be a bit of a pain. So let's use local linear approximation to estimate that. Um, so we need a function. And our function would obviously be y equals something to the power of 4. Um, <clears throat> and instead of x equaling 3.03, we're going to say <clears throat> let's, let's approximate it for x being equal to 3. So doing the equation of the tangent line at x equals 3, Let's use it. Let's call this x naught so it fits with our formula. Okay, we need three things again. We need x naught, we need y naught, and we need slope. So x naught was 3, we said. That's going to be our approximated point. If we take 3 and stick it into the function, 3 to the power of 4 would be 81. That's that we can do in our head. That was easy. And now, again, we just need the slope, which is where the derivative comes in. So if we said f of x equals x to the 4, then the derivative would be 4x cubed. And the derivative then at 3 would be 4 times 3 cubed, which is 4 times 27, which is 108. Yes. So we have now found the slope of our tangent line when x is 3. So we have all the pieces we need to create our, our tangent line. So it would be y minus 81 equals slope x minus 3. And so now, instead of putting 3.03 .03 into the function x to the 4, we're going to stick it into this function. And we'll work this out. y minus 81 is 108 times 0 0.03. 
Can we do this in our head? I think we can. 3.24, 108 times 3, 0.03. And so y equals 3.24 plus 81, which would be 84.24. So 3.03 .03 to the power of 4 is approximately 84.24. What's the real answer? Someone have a calculator there? 3.03 .03 to the power of 4? I always like to see how close we come out. Two eight three. Sorry, eighty four point two. Like this. Yeah. All right. So we were good until uh, the hundreds, hundreds place. Um, so pretty good approximation. So that's local linear approximation. Simply finding the equation of the tangent line, and then using the tangent line to evaluate instead of the actual function, as long as we're using x values close to our place where we found the tangent line.